you, Pierre and uh, Jordan, for uh, speaking to Arabin, Arabin Risala. And uh, they're both from uh, Vertiv. Uh, we would like to speak about their uh, presence at Jitex and uh, the solutions they offer in the market. Uh, so thank you once again for speaking to us. Thank you, Chris. Nice, nice talking to you again. Really appreciate the opportunity. Great being here. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. So we can start with a brief about uh, the demand for power solutions for data centers. Well, uh, if I can take the question, uh, the demand for data centers is actually changing. Uh, if we look at the design uh, from a couple of years ago, nowadays you have modular uh, UPSs, you've got UPSs that's hot swappable, uh, so uh, redundancy built into the UPS. But we also see a, a change in the trend. The change that we're seeing now is uh, looking at scalability. So when we talk about scalability and speed of deployment, there is a bigger trend to what we call power modules, which is a, let's call it a, a power pack, where you have multiple components in a prefabricated solution uh, for quick deployment on site. No normally when you look at a construction site, it's getting complex with all the the power cables and the connectivity and all that stuff, that's all built into a single solution that makes it much faster and easier for deployment, but also you can even put it on top of a roof. So it's also optimizing your space uh, in your data center environment at the end of the day. If I may add a different angle, that is the sustainability angle. So we've seen the UPS being utilized over the years and in the future as a power quality and continuity. There is another layer that is been put on top of the traditional layer, and that is the center of control of, uh, let's say, a multi-source, uh, let's say, feed. A multi-source meaning renewables and traditional. The UPS is becoming really the point in which the various uh, uh, feeds come in and the feeds are managed. And again, a renewable and, uh, and uh, let's say, a traditional, uh, a traditional uh, uh, energy do not behave in the same way. So the UPS is central, central in its role to enable the energy transition. Okay. And, and recently you launched data center cooling solutions as well for edge and uh, smaller IT rooms. Can you tell us uh, more about that? No, ab absolutely. So the, the, the more and more we expand our portfolio for uh, white space. So inside inside the data center, and uh, and uh, certainly the thermal, the cooling part is is a very important component uh, of it all. So new products being uh, being launched. Um, we are increasing. We have increased, continue to increase our investment in uh, in innovation, and that goes towards the big data center kind of a facility space, but a lot and increasingly so the white space and IT. And one thing that we have launched, and we have also here at Jitex, is our uh, um, integrated, uh, uh, factory integrated, uh, configured, factory configured and assembled uh, micro data center. So um, rack solutions, I solution, road solutions in which we have the rack itself, the power, power distribution, um, the UPS, cooling. Uh, management systems all in one to enable a distributed uh, edge computing infrastructure to be deployed. Okay. Um, in terms of new products that you've launched, you also have added uh, lithium ion batteries to your UP, uh, UPS range as well. Can you tell us more about that and what was the reason behind this yeah, addition? Let, let, let me take it if you're okay, please ch chime in. But uh, you know, continuing with this, uh, uh, you know, increased investment in innovation that we are fully committed to at, at Vertiv. Um, lithium goes exactly in that direction. And we see lithium being uh, uh, heavily adopted across the board. So from the multi-megawatt data center all the way to the small, uh, small single, smaller, not necessarily smaller, smaller uh, single phase uh, UPS. Why lithium? Uh, basically, uh, more reliability, uh, a small footprint, uh, longer life cycle. So all in all, a much uh, stronger uh, total cost of ownership value proposition relative to the traditional technology. It's accelerating. Okay. In terms of changes to uh, your channel partner program, uh, has there been any major announcements? 
we will con we continue the drive of, of uh, expanding our our network. Uh, it's a huge market, if you look at East Africa, but globally as well. Uh, so we continue with that, but we're also driving uh, various different programs that we've introduced. Uh, traditionally, a a project company putting a separate focus on the channel part of a business, which is critical, the, the enterprise business, the smaller space side of it. So we, we currently actually, which is quite exciting, we've engaged on, on a roadshow and we are covered now six countries in Middle East Africa and there's a continuous process uh, that we will roll out going into next year. Uh, it's important because we need to get closer to the customers. We need to understand the requirements. So it's not just Yes, the technology and this is what you must use. It's also to understand what's the actual requirements and the needs, because all the countries are not the same. Power quality, uh, power availability is not the same. And how do we as a company adopt and change to make sure that we provide the customer with a product or a solution that meets their objectives at the end of the day? So it's more what you need, understand that need, instead of this is what you can have from us. So that's the flexibility that Vertif is bringing into the market. And uh, well, thank you. And I'd say that in general, certainly in uh, in Middle East and Africa, but but more in general, uh, I want to reiterate the message of the very very profound commitment of Vertif to the channel, um, not our tradition, but uh, something that we are reinforcing. I myself are orchestrating globally our channel uh, uh, programs to make sure that we become a leader in, uh, in the channel space. Uh, our global coordination goes definitely in the direction of uh, becoming a channel uh, friendly, uh, channel friendly company. So and we are making strides in that direction. And just as one of the examples of it, uh, Zoom Media, uh, we actually with COVID, Hope to officially launch it, but it's a launch in the media. We've opened a hub in Morocco, uh, and we will continue that process further down into Africa as well. So uh, we're bringing the products closer to the customer because speed is also critical in this market. So lots of heavy lifting that's been done, lots of programs that's been put in place, and uh, we see incredible growth in that market. So really excited about uh, the programs that we put in place, and we will continue to drive it and refine it as we go forward. Uh, in terms of business continuity for your channel partners and customers alike, I mean, the past couple of years have been very difficult for the market as well. Um, uh, when you look at your channel marketing strategies going beyond 2021 with, with just a couple of uh, you know months for the year to end and you have your focus already set on 2022, what are the key focus areas that you would like to focus upon as Vertif? Do you let, want to let, jump let, on the global one first? Yeah, no, let, let's speak, let's speak, let's stay, it would be very, very broad. So let's stay focused on, uh, focused on the channel. And for us, the channel is continue to improve our uh, uh, partner friendly, let's say, tools. Everything that goes from uh, uh, best in industry, partner um, uh, management uh, portal, a uh, portal for our, for our partners, uh, making sure that we provide our partner tools not only to excel in the volume uh, part of the business but also in the value so i was talking about this integrated uh, uh, micro data center uh, more and more are taking to market tools that enable our partners to be you know at the forefront of the technology with configurators with tools like virtual reality and this kind of a technology expansion and tool expansion is something that will will continue over and above that you know it's uh, it's about a broader portfolio it's about uh, broader uh, geographic coverage and, and maybe specifically on the geographic coverage uh pierre yep. so, to you. <clears throat> thanks Giordano. Uh, we also i've mentioned the hub but that's not all we've also opened up an entity in kenya and we will continue to expand our footprint in africa uh, opening up new distribution networks. So, uh, very, very interesting times. Uh, looking forward to a, uh, we set ourselves a, a very stretched target for growth. Uh, we've continued that over the last three years and definitely we will continue with that going forward uh, into the future. So, uh, 
it is stay relevant, understand your market, uh, be present, build the right relationships, build the loyalty, because it's not just about selling a product, it's to make sure that we've got everything that supports that product in the market. So it's from, from the product, but also the after sales service and support. How do we deal with it? We're rolling that structures out. So we started in certain areas and now we, now we understand and now we're taking it forward in an aggressive manner into the market. So uh, really exciting times and uh, looking forward to uh, the next uh, couple of years with a, a double digit uh, growth that we aggressively driving. Uh, thank you, Pierre and uh, Giordano for speaking to us. Nice uh, having a chat with you and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks thanks you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.